I wonder where they've got the new Spring Framework releases. Oh, okay, look at this. JPA 3.2 Hibernate ORM 7.0. Not a huge fan, but this is interesting. So the new Hibernate support is, well, first of all, we support Hibernate ORM 7.0 as, as a JPA provider. The native support that used to live in ORM.Hibernate 5 has been migrated to ORM.JPA.Hibernate. Uh, and now there's new capabilities, but it's pared down because some of that has now been moved into Hibernate itself, uh, not from here, but just the concepts, the things that we were providing. So there's a, a much more pared down so, sort of uh, surface level of classes here. What's most interesting to me is that no matter which Hibernate you're using, no matter which JPA you're using, we now support injecting an entity manager factory as well as its shared entity manager directly via at inject or at autowired. So basically, you don't have to use, you know, the entity manager annotation. Isn't, isn't that what it is? Let's try this out. So start.spring.io. JPA. We're going to use JPA. Sure. We're going to use Postgres. Okay. We use Docker Compose. We use, I said, spa, JPA. Okay. And I guess that's it. Is that enough? That feels like it's enough. Make sure we're using Spring Boot 4.0 and Spring Framework 7.0. Hit generate. Open this up. Okay. So we've got a brand new application talking to a SQL database. We want to tell Spring and JPA to automatically initialize the DDL for us. Okay. And show SQL as always. Okay. Okay. Let's see what happens. So we're going to create a entity, very simple entity here. JPA entity at ID. Make sure you use the right one there. Okay. So there's the basics of our entity. And now obviously JPA is a terrible technology. So I will do this. Okay, good. Now let's create a repository and let's try using it. Yeah. So we have a couple ways to work with our data now. Let's see if it just, the basics are working. I might have missed a property or something. Remember, I didn't specify a database connection because we're using the embedded uh, Spring Boot Docker Compose support. So let's see if I just do save new customer and I'll, oh, I want to use a generated value. So there's this. And, uh, you know, heck, let's just do a b dot for each name, save, and then we'll do customer repository dot find all dot for each. Okay. So there's this, and we can now run that. Let's just see if that works. Okay, everything's fine. So this is a, you know, it's worked. We've got to select all from customer, blah, blah, blah. We've got our customers. Uh, you can see I've run this program before. Maybe it's better if I do customer delete all. Okay, there you go. So that's fine. We've written some records deleted from the ones existing. Why would it do this? Why, why would it? Oh, that's, that is just, that's incredible. Why not do a delete from customer ID in or something? that? It's doing an N plus one on the deletions. That's that's quite something. Okay, so anyway, that, that's all standard stuff. You could have done this before. Obviously, you don't need that anymore. What else could you do? Well, you could use the entity manager, right? Used to be you had to do, what was it? Persistence context. That's what you have to do. If you wanted to get the entity manager before, you have to have at persistence context, which is not a qualifier as far as I know, right? Like, yeah, that doesn't belong on a, on a you can't put it here as far as I, as far as I know, can you? Yeah, no, that doesn't work. So it has to be on a field, which goes against everything else in Spring, right? Everything else is just a, a variable you can inject. But now I can. I can do this or that. So let's try this, the old stuff. Let's see if that still works. Dot create query, select C from customer dot, I don't know, get query, execute, no, query, get result list. Okay. For each, no types. Nice. 2025, no generics. Interesting. Okay. So, you know, let's, Oops, we want, we want that, we want this, okay, run that. Okay, so that's worked, great, right? Don't love it, but it does work. So that's the existing arrangement. Let's try now commenting this out. We should be able to, according to the docs, we should be able to inject the entity manager factory as well as the shared entity manager reference can be generally injected via auto-wired. So I, I imagine they've just made this a, a proxy, basically. It's a facade around a multi-tenant entity manager. So here we go, entity manager, EM. Okay, so nothing has changed. The code still compiles. Uh, it's just that I'm not injecting it via the field anymore. I'm doing it via the parameters there. And not that you should. I mean, I'm doing dependency injection in the parameters of my beam provider methods, but in theory, if I wanted to do the worst thing possible, I could just do this, right? Don't ever use field injection. That's why I don't like this either, right? It's, it's field injection. It's nasty. Here we go. Take five. Okay. Okay, that works. It's, it's working in all cases. So that's really, really interesting to me. What is it? I wonder what's happening behind the scenes. We can see in the definition here, it's using a local container entity manager factory bean, which I imagine must be doing some sort of multi-tenancy behind the scenes. Because remember, these entity managers are not thread safe, right? They are, they have to be, they have state that's associated with the current thread. 
So behind the scenes, when you injected persistence context, Spring gave you an entity manager. It itself was multi-tenant. Behind the scenes, it kept a thread local. So I wonder if that's still the case. I don't know. It's, it's all too fun. So here's the code from Spring Framework uh, 2.0. Still there. So I'm not sure what all has changed, but you know, just if you accidentally do the thing that makes sense, it'll still work. And if you do the thing that used to make sense, that'll work as well. So there you go. That's JPA and the new Spring Framework 7 and Spring Boot 4.0 release, both coming in November of this year.